And good morning and welcome back. We have breaking news that we're continuing to follow for you here on CBS News New York. Let's go to these live pictures full. I'm going to put my glasses on, give you an update on the situation of this crane fire that the FDNY seems to be getting the upper hand on right now. You can see they're firing water on this crane fire from the building adjacent. This is at 41st and 10th Avenue. Lots of street closures in the area right now as some debris continues to cascade down from this crane to the streets below. They're obviously is a building directly across from that crane where the firefighters are trying to extinguish this fire. This has been going on for a greater part of the last hour right now. Some of the street, street closures we do want to tell you about. 10th Avenue between 39th and 42nd Street closed right now. 41st between 10th and 11th also closed. There's some talk of some potential evacuations in the area. As I mentioned, there are some debris issues. As you can see, the FDNY continuing to get the upper hand. Let's quickly bring in Glenn Corbett, who's on the phone with us from John Jay. Fire science is expert there. Uh, Glenn, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. How tough to fight a fire like this? This is not something you see every day here in New York, in the city where you do see basically just about everything. Yeah, this is a very unusual situation and probably the most incredibly difficult um, fire to put out for obvious reasons, basically. There's no easy way to access what's burning. This is a vacant building uh, that you're seeing directly uh, next to this crane. It looks as though the FDNY now has the upper hand. Um, you show up on a scene like this, Glenn, I guess the, the first thing is, I, A, how do we get water on this fire? What were they able to do as far, I mean, this is kind of marksmanship here. They were at the building across from the crane, just firing the water onto this burning crane. Right. So, so the first, of course, the very first thing they're going to concern themselves with is the danger of, of this uh, complete collapse or of the crane, the top of the jib or on top of the crane, basically. Uh, so they worry about that. But you're right. The issue is getting water onto it. Uh, it's probably, I guess, the motors in the uh, the, the uh, jib itself is the top part of the uh, or in the um, uh, where the operator's uh, position is for the crane. Probably the motors, and so getting water on that's really, really difficult. And so, you know, what what's going to end up happening is they're using a standpipe system in one of the adjacent high rises. So they're using the pipes that are in these adjacent buildings or this particular adjacent building to basically apply water to it. And of course, one of the issues is is that the firefighters up on the roof there really can't, can't get a really good perspective exactly where the water's landing because there's a great distance involved there, and this is something that. They're trying to, again, trying to aim the nozzle so that most of the water that's being, uh, you know, discharged from the nozzle, that most of it, or at least a decent amount of it, ends up landing on the crane itself. So this is a, this is, this is a one-of-a-kind kind of situation, again, but it's New York, and, uh, you know, things like this happen from time to time. But, um, but again, it's an incredibly uh, unique and very incredibly difficult situation to deal with. Yeah, just when you think you've seen everything, something like this that ends up happening, and, and you've got we've got pictures coming in from buildings all around the city of people seeing the black smoke earlier when the fire, when the, the crane was fully uh, engulfed, and now, like I said, it looks as though the FDNY does have the upper hand. What is the next step now? I mean, uh, how precarious a situation is it going to be to get onto this crane to at some point dismantle it, and then, of course, figure out how this fire starts? Started. Right. So that's going to be, that's an even just as uh, incredibly difficult situation as what they're dealing with now. Uh, they're going to need to send uh, folks up to the top of the crane, basically, and understand what what's damaged, you know, what, um, you know, and, and of course, the other thing is how they're going to take this thing down now um, as well. Uh, I, I think they're not going to worry too much about how it started. They're going to be more focused on making sure they can hopefully take it, take it down safely, basically. So. Um, so this is this is going to go on for a while um, because again, it's it, this particular crane. Of course, the situation uh, presents you know a, a collapse danger to those areas uh, around it. Basically, so we should expect for for a while here now that uh, this this area may be isolated and, and cut off until they can actually get in there and understand exactly how how much damage has been done structurally to the crane and then figure out, okay, how they're going to basically remove it um, and take it down. So this is, there's a lot involved here. Again, this doesn't happen very often. I, this is actually the first one I've ever seen like this where we've had a major fire uh, like this. So, 
Uh, it's going to be a difficult situation going forward for, for at least, I am sure it's probably going to be at least a couple of days here. You are, are obviously a fire sciences expert. On a scale of 1 to 10, when you look at these pictures and you see what these firefighters are doing from the standpipe at the building across, shooting this water into the air, hoping they can get at least some of it on the fire, how difficult a task is it? This is like trying to water your lawn from the block away. Yeah, that's a good analogy. I mean, that's that's exactly what the exactly what the problem is. Is that it's not even that you, 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 the firefighters on the roof they really can't see exactly where it's landing, so they're going to be using other firefighters, uh, uh, you know, uh, along the side of what's going on, and then perhaps in other buildings, perhaps using the drone. I don't know if they've got it up or not, but just to try to figure out okay how to lift or move the stream so they actually put water on it. I think the other part of this too is that at some point. Uh, this thing's going to run out of fuel, basically, to burn. So maybe a combination of the water and the, the reduction in the amount of fuel here um, will probably play a role. So, but it, this is again, this is this is a this is not this doesn't happen typically. And uh, you know, it's it's if this if this if the you know, of course, obviously, if the if the motors and things are at ground level, this thing would be put out in a few minutes. You know, but because it is so high in the air and so far away from these other adjacent buildings, it just makes it an impo almost impossible task to try to deal with it. Yeah, pretty incredible scene when we saw it. A four alarm fire here, so you've got lots of firefighters that are on the scene right now. As we mentioned, lots of street closures below. We are getting word now of four injuries reported. Now, we're not sure if these are, if, if heaven forbid, anybody was on or near the crane up high, or if these are injuries from some debris or water or anything cascading to the, uh, the ground below. We'll continue to update that for you here. Uh, Glenn, again, just kind of as, as we wrap up with you, having seen this situation play out, seeing how well the FDNY did at extinguishing most of this fire from, from what it looks like, what, what's the big takeaway here? Well, it just shows us, you know, that, you know, in the New York City that we always have a variety of different kind of problems that the FDNY is going to have to deal with. And this is one that uh, perhaps has been discussed, but I don't think it's ever actually had a fire like this before. So the takeaway for them is that Hopefully, we'll figure out what happened here and then understand how to perhaps deal with it better. But I don't know there's really any other way of dealing with it other than the way they're handling it right now. Yeah, you bring up a great point. How do you practice for something like this, uh, never knowing that, obviously, a, uh, a, a crane fully engulfed is going to be the, uh, the assignment of the day. But the FDNY up to the test for whatever happens. And then true to form here, uh, it looks as though they have extinguished this fire. You can still see a little smoke emanating from, um, from, what, from the top of this crane here. But for the most part, the flames that we saw uh, about 15 to 20 minutes ago, those have been extinguished. Well, Glenn, we appreciate you taking the time for us from John Jay, fire sciences expert. Uh, Glenn Corbett, thank you for taking a few moments, Glenn. Thank you, Chris. And uh, well, we can update you on the four injuries that I did mention. We are now told one injury is a firefighter. Three civilians were injured. Uh, again, the extent of the injuries, we do not know right now, as we again are just kind of keeping you updated here on CBS News New York of this crane fire taking place at 41st and 10th Avenue. Um, you can see the traffic below, tons of street closures at this point, uh, because uh, again, if you had seen some of the live pictures about 10, 15 minutes ago, this crane was fully engulfed so obviously the ground below uh, a huge concern the building that this crane is up against is a vacant building right now so there's no one in the building uh, that we were worried about uh, once we found out the building was vacant but the firefighters FDNY doing an incredible job of using the standpipe at the building adjacent to this crane and literally firing their their water cannons across to help extinguish the flames of uh, of this crane fire this morning but you can see the picture Pictures uh, far and wide being tweeted all over from people working in, in some of the buildings throughout the city, seeing this black smoke rising above the city and then knowing exactly what the issue was to this crane fire here at 41st and 10th. Uh, again, to reiterate, four injuries to report at this point. One of those injuries is a firefighter, three civilians evacuations below obviously uh, being done by uh, FDNY NYPD to make sure people are cleared out best as possible because now that this crane is in this precarious position of having been uh, on fire here for the greater part of the last hour who knows what can happen safety is obviously the first precaution as this is a four alarm fire that the FDNY seems to have under control we're going to continue to keep you updated and follow this breaking news story here on CBS News all day we'll give you an update in about 17 minutes with CBS 2 News at 9 a.m.
a.m. with Cindy Shu right here on CBS News New York. But we thank you for being with us. And again, we will update you as it warrants on this fire on 41st and 10th in Manhattan this morning. Thanks for joining us. Copy that. Uh, 
Uh, yes, I did. Thank you. Okay, understood, Patty. Thank you. Hi, Madeline. Okay. Okay, got it, Patty. Hello, guy. Uh, yeah, that's that's this. I guess the sidewalk along 10th Avenue that it uh, the scaffolding over the sidewalk that it went down on. Uh, from what I could tell, but I can't get a complete angle on it.
Chris, what we could see overhead is that firefighters are now trying to spray water onto that crane from the uh, rooftop of the building that was under construction. Earlier, they were also spraying water into the crane from an adjacent rooftop. Again, the operation's ongoing, but it does appear that the fire itself has been knocked down. Live in Chopper 2, Jim Smith, CBS 2 News. Fox Chopper's back with you.